Hey folks, Will Brink here, BrinkZone.com. Today we're going to talk about a, an old topic. Uh, dogma of nutrition uh, is that uh, a calorie is a calorie. Excess calories from protein will just be converted to body fat. And I will summarize by saying that is simply not true. It has been shown to be not true. Uh, in the data has been shown to be not true in real in the real world. But let's stick basically to data. Uh, you know, and up until actually fairly recently, uh, there really wasn't a lot of studies looking specifically at the role of different macronutrients, especially protein on body composition. So a lot of it was uh, fairly hypothetical. That is, you know, four calories of protein, four calories from carbs, nine from fat, calories of calories should all more or less do the same thing when in excess. But again, this is not the truth. You know, what do we find in the vast majority of studies when people are uh, on a diet and given different amounts of protein? Well, pretty much across the board, what you find is that the higher protein intakes uh, are superior for maintaining lean body mass. And usually what you find in these studies is higher protein diets, uh, they may not lose as much weight, but they will lose a similar amount of fat, which is obviously what matters, or a greater amount of fat. But either or, it usually comes down to the actual fat loss is similar or slightly greater in the high protein diet. The advantage of the high protein diet in weight loss is as it implies it retains muscle mass and of course you would need muscle mass for your metabolism and your health and so on and so forth. So on a weight reduction diet, higher protein diets uh, in the literature and the data have, are pretty much universally superior. So, but more interesting, uh, what about excess calories? What about when we take people and put them on additional calories beyond maintenance that should make them gain weight? And those are more recent and really pretty interesting. And again, the majority of studies that actually have looked at this that parse out the differences between the macronutrients, and this particular conversation is protein, are finding that protein does not uh, impact weight gain. That is, uh, the portion of weight gain from the additional calories is coming from the fat and the carbohydrates is not coming from protein and there was a very well done very tightly controlled study uh, in JAMA uh, a few years back that parsed that out and again got somewhat ignored from what I can tell uh, but was for me and many people again sort of a I told you so moment uh, and definitely worth reading but that seems to be uh, the case across the board with, with uh, high protein diets uh, and again, we can discuss what is high protein, um, but higher protein diets uh, are superior in both uh, weight loss, uh, calorie deficient or calorie reduced, and weight gain uh, studies. So what does that bring us to? Um, that brings us to a recent study that again I'm going to get to in a minute. But I'll tell you, uh, as far back as 92-93, uh, you know, uh, I started publishing articles in all the magazines. This, remember, this is before the internet, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my articles were being published and I was stating as much that uh, high protein diets or protein itself was a very poor substrate for gaining body fat uh, in the human body. And how did I come to that conclusion? Well, uh, it was like 2 in the morning, I am in school uh, at the blackboard. Uh, this was during my second semester of taking biochem and I remember uh, writing out the pathways for which the body can convert uh, uh, dietary fat into body fat, the pathways for which the body can convert dietary carbohydrates into body fat, and the pathways and such by which the body can uh, convert dietary protein into body fat. And I remember having an epiphany looking at this, the, the amount of steps and the amount of work and the amount of energy and stuff it took for the human body to convert protein into body fat. And I don't know why this is so difficult or has been so difficult for others uh, with vastly more uh, uh, education than myself uh, in these areas to figure out by simply looking at that. But at the end of the day, protein uh, from a hormonal, from a thermic, from a biochemical point of view is very difficult, if not damn near impossible, to convert to body fat. Uh, now again, that there are other variables to consider, of course. This, this Everything does not work in a vacuum. And so when you're talking about mixed meals, when you're adding carbohydrates and fats and so on, things get a bit more complicated. And I'm not going to go into that here, uh, but to say that again, uh, I think the studies are pretty, pretty conclusive that a calorie is not a calorie in the real world uh, as it applies to body fat gain, body fat loss in excess calories. Um, 
I give you an analogy, which, which actually somebody gave to me in a forum discussion, more like a forum flame war, but never mind, uh, trying to counter what I was saying, and actually I thought they did such a, 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 a good job uh, of using this that I turned it around on them, and I actually think it's actually a good analogy. I'm going to use it. When I said, these studies show a calorie is not a calorie, the, the person responded with, well, that's like saying a mile is not a mile. And, uh, which they thought countered my argument, which I thought actually was a good analogy. And I took that analogy to try to make it as simple as I possibly could to say, in, in a vacuum, you're right, a mile is a mile, a calorie is a calorie. That is, the distance of a mile is a mile. Now let's take that mile and put it on a very steep grade, like so. Take one car and drive it up that very steep grade for a mile. Take another identical car and drive it down that hill for a mile. And then check the amount of energy used. Well, you are going to find the amount of energy used is vastly different for that one mile in one car versus the other. And so, to keep the analogy very simple, protein is basically uh, that car going up the hill, using up a lot of energy, and carbs and fat, more or less, are that car going down the hill. Now, obviously, anal like all simple analogies, if you pick that apart, you know, if you really get into detail, it's going to fall apart. I'm just trying to keep it simple. So, what brings me here today? Uh, as far as uh, mentioning of a new study. Well, in my hands, I, I printed out a fairly new study here by uh, my buddy, Dr. Antonio and colleagues. And this study is, a fir is actually uh, a, a first of its kind. That is, it is the highest protein intakes fed to people to date that I know of, and either does the paper. Uh, and it was done in trained individuals, because most of these studies, of course, a lot of times what they call high protein is not actually all that high. Uh, and almost invariably they are untrained. Well, in this study, they fed people, uh, let me look, 4.4 grams per kg of protein to people. That's five, about five times the RDA. That's a lot of protein. And in addition to their uh, normal food intake, it added to about, about 800 additional calories per day to their diet. And they did this for eight weeks, and the people were instructed to uh, do their same training program. They didn't uh, train, alter their training program. And after the eight weeks, period of addition about uh, five times the RDA of protein and 800 calories, they did not gain a pound. Uh, they did not gain a pound in body fat. They did not really gain uh, a pound. And again, uh, we're talking about statistical variations here. I should just say they did not gain a statistically significant amount of either. Obviously, within the group, there are going to, people that, there are going to be people that gain and loss small amounts. But at the end of the day, the group differences were basically non-existent. Now, for me personally, as far as taking the study, adding it to the existing data, as well as real world experience, it really just puts it to bed for me. Uh, the bottom line is that protein is damn near impossible or just very difficult to convert to body fat, and higher protein diets have obvious examples, uh, sorry, obvious advantages. Uh, for others, uh, understand that this particular study and uh, does have some uh, inherent uh, flaws due to the design of the study. It is basically the nature of such studies that for, uh, do have some inherent flaws that are uh, do make for legitimate um, uh, criticisms, for sure. Uh, I won't say, I will say that the, the authors did a good job of controlling for the known inherent flaws of such study design, and they do a very good job of discussing uh, those possible flaws and those, those confounding variables in the discussion uh, part of the study. But uh, having said that, like I say, um, this study, in addition to other studies that I've read in my own experience and stuff, pretty much, you know, nail in the coffin. For me, your mileage may vary, that's okay. But uh, my personal feeling is, uh, at this point, if somebody, you know, to this day says, well, ex just excess protein, just converted, converted to body fat, there's no reason. I personally feel what you do is you take the study and you, you roll it up really, really tight, and then you smack them over the head with it. That, that's basically what I recommend you do with it. Again, you don't have to do it. So I hope this info helps. I hope it kind of puts things to rest. Does excess protein simply convert to body fat? In my view, the answer is no. That does not mean, A, that your entire diet from, should come from protein, obviously. I mean, remember, there's a pro and a con to everything out there. It simply means that, I, you know, you don't really have to worry about uh, getting uh, higher than your requirement amounts of protein, and there are probably benefits to doing that, uh, specifically during weight loss phases and such. But uh, I, wouldn't, I would put that one to rest and move on to other uh, issues. And I hope this info helps. And if it did, you might want to sub up. As you see, I give the objective science-based data. And I'll uh, see you all on the Brink Zone.